My name is Michael and this is UseVim. Today we're going to talk about the adding custom configuration with the VimRC and um, Vim configuration folders. So if you want to learn more um, about VimRC than what I'm going to talk about in this video, you can just do a help VimRC or help VimRC intro and it will go into greater detail about all the things you can do. Um, we're just going to cover the basics here. So essentially what we're going to do is just adding some custom configuration to, to Vim to make it, to modify it to be a little bit uh, more of a smoother experience for our, our own specific workflow. On Linux system, um, you would add the vimrc file and you would call it .vimrc to your home directory. So uh, right now we're in my home directory and a dot file on Linux is a hidden file so we can see that we don't actually have it yet. So we'll create a vimrc file and the first thing we're going to modify here is uh, we're going to control indentation. So right now you can see that my indentation is doing a tab stop because I'm hitting delete right there and then tab once it creates a tab stop character uh, and then it's uh, doing a tab stop of 8 by default so it's going you can see down here it's going 8 characters forward on the file so let's modify that to be uh, instead of doing a tab stop we'll do spaces and instead of 4 characters we'll do or 8 characters we'll do 4 so expand tab and set tab stop equals to 4 and there you have it you can see that now when I hit tab it goes forward four characters and I'm hitting delete indicating now it's spaces instead of tabs so rather than then doing a tab stop like this um, if you looked at it in uh, raw ASCII it's doing spaces in, instead with these two settings uh, if you wanted to find out about more about these settings you could do help expand tab or help tab stop and this is a way for you to um, browse around and read about uh, the various settings you can actually find in the help files um, a list of all the settings that you can possibly do um, one of the ways that I've built up my vimrc um, is that I will go and look at what other people have done in their vimrc's and then use the help if for for a setting I'm not familiar with I'll use the help to understand what it's about so that's a way to kind of wrap your head around um, what what's actually being done with some of these settings and the second thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a um, custom color scheme or plugin. So the way you add plugins to Vim on Linux is you create a .vim folder. You can see I've already done it here. And then underneath this folder you'll add a different structure depending on the type of plugin you're going to add. So let's just see if I've added anything in here yet. Okay, I've added colors. So that's uh, the name of the folder you would need to add for color schemes. And if I wanted to add the plugin, um, I would add uh, .vim pack. If I wanted to add a file type plugin, I'd do file type detect. And if I wanted to do something like custom syntax file, I would add syntax. So if you're adding in a bunch of things and you look at some more advanced Vim configurations, you'll see a bunch of different folders relative to this .vim file here. Let's just check out .vim slash colors and see if I've added it already. Okay, so I have added this color scheme Mononoke, which I want to install, but if I wanted to get it from the internet, uh, let's see, I've already done it, so we'll do history grep clone. So I cloned it from GitHub, it's called, uh, the repo is called vim-mononoke. 
and let's just clone that again real quick just so you can see what the what it looks like when you do that so there it is Vim Mononoke and you can see that it comes with the colors folder already and then the, you know a typical readme and a license and then relative to the colors folder is the .vim file so here in our system um, I've already added the mononoke.vim file relative to the .vim folder here and underneath colors so now let's add it to our vimrc so color scheme okay and there you have it we've installed the mononoke color scheme now let's take a look at how to do the same thing on Windows 10, but in addition we'll add a package called Nurtry. Okay, here we are on a Windows 10 VM. Let's go ahead and install a VMRC file. So if you want to see some places where you can install it, you can do echo home or echo vim runtime. We're going to install it in the home directory, so C users user uh, in this case. So let's navigate there and create a file named underscore vimrc. And let's end that let in a little bit of configuration here. So color scheme. We will use a color schema I like that's installed by default called Kohler. Make sure that syntax is enabled. And have file type plugin indent on indent on. Let's save that and open a Vim and there we go. We have uh, Vim has picked up our VimRC file in the uh, home directory and is applying the configuration when we load it now. So let's do something slightly more advanced. Let's add a package. Uh, so the folder name for package configure well for other configuration structure on Windows is Vim files. So Vim files pack and then uh, this name can be anything. It's uh, arbitrary so I'll just use my username. What up Mike D? And then we'll create a start folder for packages we want to start when Vim starts. And let's install the Nerdtree package. So we'll go to GitHub and here it is. Let's download it. Extract it. There it is, and then we'll just copy it over here so there isn't a two tiered directory structure. So if we navigate in, there's the package. And let's do one other thing. Let's add a hotkey for this package. Oops. is in the github documentation for nerd tree it's right here so this is just a hotkey to toggle the nerd tree open with control n let's put that in save it 
and open back up and there we go nerd tree is installed and we're looking at it with control and the hotkey we've added to our vimrc file <laughs>